When I became the worship leader here, I developed a handbook for the worship team. And in it, I talk about what worship is, um, how it helps us fill our mission of loving God, connecting together, and living on mission. I lay out a vision of excellence, um, talk about worship and spirit and truth, but right in the middle is a centerpiece, if you will, a section of lifestyle of worship. It's something we're all called to do. In this section, you won't find a long list of rules or even my opinion of how we should live. Instead, I simply quote from our text this morning, 1 Corinthians 5, verse 11. You are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer, yet indulges in sexual sin, or is greedy, or worships idols, or is abusive, or is a drunkard, or cheats people. Don't even eat with such people. Now, please know Paul is not talking about snubbing sinners in the world. He's not talking about sinners in your family or on your job. He's specifically talking about church association, about people who publicly claim to be believers, but also publicly adopt a lifestyle of sin. As worshipers, you and I are expected to not only be believers, but to exhibit the traits of a child of God. This means a public life of worship in and outside of church. In this one verse, Paul is pointing out behaviors that are in complete opposition of the life and message of Jesus Christ. As believers, God has given us power over these things. Listen and stand in the promises found in 2 Timothy 1.17. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline.